Hi, George here. And what we're going to do today in this video is I'm going to show you the external features that you'll find when you're looking at the Hamilton G5 ventilator if you happen to have one where you work or you might be getting one. Anyways, I'll take the camera off the tripod and let's start looking at the, the ventilator. So delicately grabbing the camera because I sometimes shut it off. Let's take a look at the G5. I guess we might as well start with the screen. There's a screen right over there. There isn't really much to it. It just looks like another ventilator or a typical ventilator screen. This is a touch screen, so when the ventilator is turned on, you will touch it to activate different controls and features and functions. Now, on the front of the ventilator, on this screen interface thing here, you've got this rotary knob, and the rotary knob is simply to adjust the values that you're, you're setting. And if you want to adjust, say, for example, the respirator rate, you just turn this to the respirator rate that you wanted and push that to accept the, the value. There's a couple of soft keys over here that you can also press. Alarm silence, 100% oxygen, manual breath, nebulizer, uh, print screen function, function, and of course if you want to put the ventilator in standby, you touch this to put the ventilator into standby and then accept it as well. Little flat surface here. I guess you could put stuff there if you really wanted to. Um, paper, whatever. We don't really put anything on our ventilators at all, except maybe the cuff pressure checker device right over there. It's got this little bar around it in the front. And the bar is used to support support arms like that one there for the ventilator circuit or that one for the water bag. So they've got these support arms on here. Now these support arms, doesn't matter what variety it is, they're usually adjustable and removable. So if you want to take this support arm and move it, just simply loosen this off and then you can slide the support arm one direction to the other. Or you can take it right off. Or, if you don't like the water bag on this side of the ventilator, you could take the support arm right off and place it on the other side of the ventilator. Okay, so that's the uh, support arm thing. Now if we go further down the ventilator, again there's the screen, we're just moving down the ventilator. Now within G5. We've got these ports in the front of the ventilator. Now the important ports that you're going to require for your ventilation are these two flow sensor ports. We've got the blue one right over here and the silver one. Now all these ports are color coded for a specific region, reason and that's to identify what you're supposed to use with them, especially with this flow sensor one. Now the flow sensor is this device right over here that you'll see hooked on to the patient Y. Okay? And it consists of a blue tubing and a clear tubing. The blue tubing of that flow sensor will travel all the way back here to the ventilator and you make sure the blue tubing is hooked up to the blue color coded port and the clear tubing is hooked up to the silver port which is meant to mimic or represent clear. Okay? So those are the ports. The nebulizer, if you wanted to run an external neb, or not an external neb, an internal neb to the patient, a small volume nebulizer to aerosolize any kind of drugs you want to administer your patient, this is where you'd hook it up to. And then this is just an auxiliary pressure port. So if we look further down here, this thing I'm kind of focusing on right now that's the exhalation valve right over there. Okay, So if you had to take the exhalation valve off, simply detach the circuit from here gently, place it in a safe spot, then grab this valve, twist it like this, and bring it right out. And then you can take a look at the exhalation valve, which is that orangish donut looking thing in the center. And uh, if you need to replace it, replace it. But once you've got it uh, back in place, Check to make sure it's in there nice and flat and level. Then take this back up to that exhalation port, slide that in, line it up like so, and then lock it into place. And after you've done that, take a really good look. Make sure it's nice and straight like that. Make sure it's nice and secure so it's not going to go anywhere. So that's the exhalation port. There really isn't anything else that really we as clinicians use on this ventilator. Now if we look at the circuit, oh yeah, don't forget to put the expiratory limb back on the circuit either. Make sure it's nice and secure. So as clinicians, um, the circuit is, the, is an important f uh, feature for ventilation. Here's the tubing where the gas goes from the ventilator into the humidifier, and then the blue heated wire circuit that goes to the patient Y, which is located right over here. All right. Now if we focus in on, on this patient Y, this flow transducer right over here, this has to be set or attached to the patient Y with the blue tubing closest to the patient. Okay, So always remember, blue tubing 
closest to the patient. And if you ever forget which one goes to the patient, just go back to the ventilator and it tells you right over here, hey, blue, patient. So make sure it's closest to the patient. Okay, and it attaches right over there. So when you set your circuit up, try to make your circuit nice and neat and have the tubing with the, with the uh, heated wire temperature sensor cord tight in between the circuit, like so. So it looks fairly neat and you can track it back to the ventilator appropriately. Okay. Humidifier, you're going to have a humidifier to humidify the inspiratory gases or at least have an HME if you don't have a humidifier. Locking wheels, so the wheels should be locked. Come on to this side, not really very much with regards to the ventilator, you can see. It has some ports here for connecting up a cable to portray the monitor on a large screen, etc. Back of the ventilator right over here. This long arm here, or this little lever, this is meant to adjust the pitch of the screen. So if you push this in, you can adjust the screen to tilt backwards or forwards. And it's this thing right over here. When you push this, you can turn the ventilator monitor to whatever direction you want it to point in. So this one's to adjust the, the pitch or the angle of the, the monitor. And uh, this one's to adjust, sorry, this one is to adjust the, the direction where the monitor is facing. A couple other things back here. This is where the gases come into the ventilator. Your high pressure oxygen, high pressure air. Those probably should be attached for you. You don't have to really worry about that. Um, on off switch, right underneath here, there's your on off switch. That turns the ventilator on and off. Remember, it's right back there. If we go down a little further, here's our um, connection cord or power cord for electricity. The monitor cable attachment cord right over there. And we also, you can see, don't really see this on a lot of ventilators, but here's where you access the O2 fuel cell for the oxygen monitor, oxygen analyzer that's built in the ventilator. We really don't have much to do with that. That's more of a biomed thing, but if you ever had an issue uh, where the ventilator was not reading oxygen properly, or there was an issue with it, it wouldn't calibrate, that's where your fuel cell goes. A couple other ports down here, special interface ports, etc. Monitoring ports, not much to do with that either. Uh, extra, or there's, there's the power cords, there's a little um, support arm right over here for the power cords, and this one will have two power cords. One power cord is going to be for the ventilator, and the other power cord is going to be for the humidifier. Our ventilator has a little basket down here as well, so we can put extra supplies in if we wanted to. So, supplies, I mean respiratory supplies, I don't mean like lunch supplies, like we don't put our fruit in there or anything like that, it's just for holding uh, extra ventilator parts, etc. And the other side of the ventilator, well, there isn't really much to it as well. It's just simply the other side of the ventilator. Nothing there at all. Okay, so in essence, that's pretty much the external features of the Hamilton G5. The main thing when you're circuiting the ventilator and before you do your pre-use check is just make sure that you've got this flow sensor right over here situated in the right spot for ventilating the patient and you've got these two hoses here connected up to the two ports right here appropriately. Everything else for circuit connection is pretty standard like any other ventilator. There isn't really much difference to it. Just make sure that your tubings are on there nice and tight, your connections are nice and tight so there's no potential for leaks to occur. And uh, if your humidifier is mounted low like this one is, Make sure you've got this support arm situated in a way that there is no tension on the water line there that goes to that humidifier, okay? Now, one thing I need to show you here is with this, this uh, flow sensor, I'm going to try to take it off one-handed. Okay, there we go. If you look at it, you'll notice that there are the diameters the same, okay? The external diameters are the same, and it's meant to be that way. The only thing is, when you're using this on a patient or you want to connect uh, the patient side to the tapered flex tube for your closed suction system or you want to hook it up to a tapered flex tube or what have you, you have to put an adapter on here in order for it to fit. Like this is meant to fit, the external diameter here, or on this side I should say, is meant to fit into the circuit like so. So it fits in there nicely. But this doesn't really hook up to anything. What you need to use in that case bear with me, is an adapter, an adapter like this one. So if we play, wanted to hook this up to a 
tapered flex tube or something like that, or a test lung even to do the pre-use check, we would have to simply slide that on there. And now it's ready to go. So all that's doing is taking the diameter of the faux transducer to the same, this makes it the same diameter as the patient Y. Okay, so they're exactly the same diameters now. So now you can hook whatever you need to up to there for ventilating your patient. So you will need that. And that's pretty well it. A 10 minute video to go over the external features of the Hamilton G5 ventilator.